That was my passion to start geology, but this year there were little issues. So, can we start? Oh, no, I am here. Yes, sir. I think Walter Singh is also there. Yes, uh, VC sir has joined. So, it's 11. Uh, can we start? Yes, yes. We should be on time. Yes. Conquest, Conquest of Press has also joined there. Okay, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. So let us start the event. Good morning and a warm welcome to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. S. P. Singh, respected chairperson academics, Professor Alok Kumar Buragwahai, invited speakers for the day, Professor R. M. Pant and Mr. Pankaj Chopra, and all the participants present here today in the Impact Lecture Series Part 2, organized by Royal Global Universities Institutions Innovation Council, supported by Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell. These lecture series is organized with the prime objective to enhance students' understanding of the concept of entrepreneurship, innovation, and startup, and motivate them to take up entrepreneurship as a career and provide a platform for networking and relationship building. <laughs> Entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life like most people won't, so that you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't. With this quote by Warren G. Tracy's student, I begin today's program by saying a few words about Royal IIC. Royals Institution Innovation Council was initiated in the year 2019. And since then, there was no looking back as IIC went on organizing events one after another to benefit its interested stakeholders. And within a short span of time, it earned laurels due to its genuine efforts. Now, Royal IIC is all set to inaugurate its incubation nest in its campus to guide, support, and mentor the budding entrepreneurs. Under the able leadership of the prime contributors, to name a few, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. S. P. Singh, Sir, Respected Chairperson, Sir, Coordinator, Sir, Dr. Hira Kranjan Das, Convener, Mr. Shravan Goenka, all the dedicated members and supporting staff IIC organized talk shows, competitions, awareness campaigns to ignite innovation and research amongst young minds. So this is a short but an impactful journey undertaken by Royal IIC so far. Now, I would request our respected chairperson academics, Professor Alok Kumar Buragohai, sir, to deliver the welcome address. Before that, I would like to read sir's brief profile. Sir had his early education in Shillong and was amongst the first batch of graduates from Northeast Hill University. Sir obtained his post-graduation degree from Gauhati University and PhD from Imperial College of Science, Technology and Medicine under the University of London in Plant Molecular Biology and DIC in Plant Virology microbiology from Imperial College of Science, Technology and Medicine. Sir was the founder head of the Department of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology at Tejpur University, a central university in Assam. Professor Buragohai is also the founder of the ONGC sponsored Center of Petroleum Biotechnology in the same university. 
Professor Buragohai has extensive experience of four decades in research and teaching. So has more than 90 research publications in national and international journals of repute. During the last 10 years, Sir had stints in academic governance, first as the registrar of Tejpur University, and then as the vice chancellor of Dibrugo University, Assam, for full terms of five years each in both the positions. We are pleased to have you here with us today amidst your busy schedule. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Aruna, for your kind introduction. And a very good morning to uh, our distinguished speakers this morning, uh, Professor Rajiv M. Panthaji from the Center of Management Studies in Arist. And also, we are very privileged to have amongst us as the second speaker, I think, today, uh, Mr. Pankaj Chopra from Delhi, uh, who is an angel investor and also associated with the whole business of uh, innovation and startup um, uh, in the country. Um, at the outset, I would like to uh, extend my personal welcome to the distinguished speakers, especially Professor Pant and uh, Mr. Kapoor, uh, and also my esteemed colleagues, our my, 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 my Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor S.P. Singh, uh, my distinguished colleagues, and the, the participants of today's uh, impact series of, uh, the, I think this is the second series of lecture series uh, under the aegis of the uh, Institutions Innovation Council. Uh, as we have been already told that this is a body uh, um, a unit which has been established way back in 2019 uh, under the aegis of the then Minister of Ministry of Education of India. And uh, uh, to promote entrepreneurship uh, through, um, um, uh, through encouragement of um, uh, research and innovation amongst uh, um, uh, students and uh, young faculties. And uh, as we um, agree with uh, all of you um, that the country needs more young innovation, innovative minds uh, whose uh, can be translated into enterprise uh, so that they can uh, contribute towards the building uh, by strengthening, you know, strengthening our economy and academia and industrial sectors. Um, uh, I, would, uh, uh, I would not uh, uh, hazard a long lecture because we have two distinguished speakers uh, and Professor Pant, uh, uh, as you all know, he has got enormous experience uh, and involvement um, especially uh, during the last um, few years, yeah, he has been deliberating um, uh, on and delivering lectures on innovation, uh, entrepreneurship development uh, across the country. To, to you, my personal welcome to you. Uh, to Royal Global University and uh, uh, no stone unturned to catch the young minds, both uh, the students as well as the young faculties, um, to give them platform so that their ideas can be um, uh, given opening uh, for being transformed into business ideas, business models. And we are going to have a formally launch within, I think, next one. We are with the uh, Innovation Incubation Center. So there we provide space to our young entrepreneurs and who are in the line of business. And I would like, for the benefit of the students, I would like to just remember, remind you the kind of potential that you have with you. Uh, now, I'll just cite two, two, two statistics. Uh, a few months back, uh, the Global Innovation Index has been announced. 2021 um, uh, is ranked among the 131 countries. See, about six years back, our position was 86. So within this six years, we 
we have to a very forget condition. So we are among 50 kilometers. innovative world. So that is that is an achievement of innovative potential and capacity. Innovation needs to be morphed into a viable, feasible, sustainable model. This um, potential of our young schools. And uh, uh, the only thing is that there are major hurdles are absolutely we can overcome. We need the will. One is industry academia linkage that we do not have. We are going to have now. Yes, we are having it, industry academia. We need investors. We are having investors now. Pankaj Chopra will be telling us more about it. And we have the knowledge. Professor um, Panji is going to tell us about the knowledge capital, the importance of knowledge generation and knowledge diffusion to the market. So these are the issues, uh, I think, which, which are not formidable. What is a formidable challenge is that our innovative capacity and which we have evidently. A few years ago, uh, it was Israel, a tiny dot in the world map, which produced the largest number of startups in the country, in the world. Israel is a tiny dot in the, and they're in the middle of wars and whatnot, under so much of adverse conditions without any um, you know, valuable resources, natural, natural resources, <laughs> only one capital, human capital, that uh, they emerged as the largest number of uh, startup company producers in the world. And I would uh, conclude by saying this, please remember, India is the largest producers of in, in the engineers in the world. So it has to match with our innovative capacities. We need engineers, good engineers, engineers with ideas and innovation, and we are ready to take you forward with your business models. So thank you. Once again, I welcome all of you, sir, and especially Pankazji and Panji. Uh, we look forward to your valuable uh, deliberations. And uh, I uh, congratulate the organizers for having you invited. And uh, thank you very, very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir, for inviting words. Now I would request the Honorable Vice Chancellor, <laughs> Professor Dr. S.P. Singh, sir, to address our participants. Before that, I would like to read, sir's brief profile. Way back in 2009, Professor Dr. S. P. Singh joined the Royal Group of Institutions, Guwahati, as the founder, director, and worked with the group for a period of five years. He then joined MIT Education Group as the senior vice president and was responsible for academic administration of six MIT universities situated in different states of this country. In addition to that, he also served as the founder vice chancellor of MIT University Chhattisgarh for almost two years before joining the Assam Royal Global University in November 2016 to anchor this university to heights of success and glory. With more than three decades of rich experience in teaching, research, academic administration in institutions of repute across the nation, Royal Group is blessed to have Sir twice in its journey so far. Serving the second tenure as Vice Chancellor of Royal Global University, Professor S.P. Singh has been heading institutions of repute since the last 20 years and is a well-known academician and administrator, having a very dynamic and enterprising personality. A geologist, MBA, and a law graduate with a PhD in strategic management, Professor Singh is also an ardent baseball player and has been actively involved in various social and cultural activities since his university days. Sir is also the member of the Executive Council of Dibrigo University and Assam Task Force. Over to you, sir. Singh, sir.
I think uh, there's a technical glitch. I'll just confirm, sir. Or not just uh, two minutes. I think there is some technical hitch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just tried to contact his office, but then uh, Jenny is not picking up. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, I think uh, sir might be busy with some other uh, uh, engagement. So, should, should we move But forward? he was there. No, briefly, I saw him. Yes, sir. He joined. I'm trying to contact him, but I'm unable to. Ah, Delhi Pune Gomez is on Royal Assembly. Uh, Aruna, I am trying my last attempt, and otherwise you, you you continue. Okay. Just give me one minute. Okay, okay, sir. Oh, there he is. It's our honourable ah. vice chancellor, sir, has joined. So. 
Sir, I've uh, introduced you. Sir, you may address Sir Catherine. Sir, you're muted. Aruna, I'm so sorry. I was not on my seat at that point of time. I was on a round because of some urgency in the admission department. So my humble request is whenever you introduce anybody and just confirm that person is physically present in the digital format or not. So good morning to all of you. And I think this should not go in this manner because you know if I'm not present on my table, how can I know that you are, are calling me or asking me to speak or introducing me? Yes. So you have to confirm with my office or confirm my presence by seeing my video or streaming it or not. So thank you everyone. Uh, good morning to everyone present here and uh, especially to uh, the honorable speaker today, Professor Rajiv Mohan Pant and uh, uh, other eminent speakers today. So I'm very sure the deliberation today of uh, entrepreneurship and changing reality and other uh, discussions, whatever has happened so far, must be for the benefit of all of us in Royal Global University. And uh, to my colleagues, Professor Bora Gohai, all the students and faculty members of Commerce and IIC and other departments, engineering, management. So I think many of them will be definitely attending. Good number of students are here. So I will not be able to on this topic today. I'm. Uh, or neither I have been asked for it, but my best wishes to all of you and uh, Pankaji and all others. We are eagerly waiting for, uh, uh, waiting to listen to you. And I think it is going to be a very important deliberation today. Thank you. Thank you, Arna. And thank you, Professor Bura Gohai. Uh, your person, when he came, your PN, then I came to know that I have to attend. All the best to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for sparing a valuable time. And sir, uh, sorry for the, I mean, problem that happened that will not yeah happen. yeah it should not happen please be careful thank you thank you, thank you sir um, so moving ahead with today's program now let me introduce our first speaker for the day professor dr rm pan so before that i would like to read sir's profile professor rajiv mohan pant has been associated with higher education since 1986 and has taught economics and management in some premier academic institutions of India, naming a few BIT Mesra, NIFFT Rachi, Northeastern Regional Institute of Science and Technology, Nearest, Nirjuli Arunachal Pradesh. He also served as the director of NIRD, National Institute of Rural Development, Northeast Regional Center, Guwahati, for a period of six and a half years. Professor Pant visited many universities to deliver invited lectures in the country and abroad. Sir also offers consultancy on behavioral aspects to various organizations. Professor Pant has more than 100 research papers and eight books to his credit. He is the member of Scientific and Technical Advisory Group STAG of National Commission of Hima on Himalayan Studies. Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change. He is also a member of Scientific Advisory Committee, GB Pant National Institute of Himalayan Environment, Kosi Almora. Dr. Pan is also associated with some of the working groups of Niti Ayog and also headed working group on transforming shifting cultivation and was the lead author on the report submitted to Niti Ayog. Professor Pan has been the member of academic councils of many universities, including Chancellor's nominee in the Academic Council of Assam University. He is also a member of Board of Management, NERIST. Sir is presently working as Professor of Management at NERIST under Ministry of Education, Government of India. Sir, I would request you to address our participants. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Gunaji. Uh, and uh, it's indeed a great opportunity for me to be you know, talking to such an uh, enlightened audience, right? Uh, Honorable uh, Professor Singh, the Vice Chancellor, uh, Royal Global University, 
uh, respected uh, Professor Borgo Heiser, uh, esteemed faculty members of uh, Royal Group, and also the esteemed participants. Very good morning to you all. Uh, in fact, uh, it is indeed a pleasure uh, interacting with such an enlightened audience. I'm sure some faculty members, research scholars, and even students are also attending this. So I'm quite uh, tempted to <laughs> talk to you all. And uh, my topic would be entrepreneurship, the changing realities. You know? I hope you can see the screen and also you are able to hear me uh, yes, clearly, sir. right? Yes. Sir. So uh, I will in next, uh, I have uh, around 40 minutes time, I believe. So I'll try to uh, cover these aspects very quickly. Uh, and of course, when I get more time, I'll build uh, on these issues uh, in, in details later on sometimes, right? So today I'll just uh, you know, touch upon certain aspects quickly and try to cover everything within 40 minutes time, right? So entrepreneurship, changing reality, this is the topic. And uh, I would like to start with how aspirations are changing uh, in the present time. And is required okay i'll also uh, some uh, i'll also give examples of some role models who have been able to script some success stories and i'll conclude with 10 golden rules you know uh, that uh, uh, you know are suggested by uh, none other than a great entrepreneur of a country aziz right so let me start with a few lines uh, written by robert frost Two roads diverged in the wood, and I, I chose the one less traveled by, and that made all, all the difference. And this road less traveled by is the road that leads to entrepreneurship. Uh, I'll talk about it later. In our society, the kinds of people, people who make things happen. There are other type of people, people who things happen and then people who wonder what has happened and i'm sure you know that belong to the first category people who make things happen right and these people or the entrepreneurs who make things happen they play a very important role in uh, you know in the development of any economy right so we need more entrepreneurs so that we can see things happening uh, quite fast all right. Now I come to this changing aspirations. All right. uh, well, uh, a person of my age, when we were in college, our aspirations were to get a job. And if the government, if, if the job is in the government sector, that's even better, right? So conventional mindset was, get me some job. Okay. And uh, you know, once you are in a job you have no option except to uh, follow your boss. Right? Do whatever uh, your boss says and be happy with that, right? No uh, need to use your own uh, brains, no use, no, no point using your own innovative ideas. Whatever boss is, boss is always right, right? And then wait passively for your growth. Okay. When time comes, maybe uh, you have completed 10 years service, you become eligible for associate professor, you have completed 15 years service, you become so wait for, for, you know, passively for your growth. You can't do much. Okay. And be satisfied with whatever comes in the way. Okay. And result, you know, there is no much growth, personal growth, as well as, uh, you know, uh, now this sector also is now. On the verge of saturation so uh, jobs are getting saturated productivity is low and one has to be complacent with whatever you are getting right now the present mindset i'm very happy uh, we often talk about youth dividend in case of india india is a country of young people india is a country of youth and i'm happy that, that their mindset is now changing they believe that i select their, their, their belief is that I select a career that satisfies my passion and suits my strength. I will do what I really feel I must do. That's my passion. Then I should do only that. And I should you know, choose a career which basically fits into my strength, which suits my strength. Okay? I select a career 
that offers great opportunities and freedom to innovate and excel. I can use my own ideas. I will use my innovative thinking. This is, you know, present generation is thinking now. Uh, uh, students passing out from IIMs and IITs, they are not craving to join food organization or government organizations. They are basically interested in using their own power of ideas for their own great growth. I actively pursue growth through own performance. Harder I uh, work, uh, luckier uh, I become, right? Harder I work, luckier I become. This is the philosophy that dominates the minds of uh, uh, people, you know, the mind of young people, right? Just a little bit. And uh, I actively pursue growth through own performance. Uh, harder I work, luckier I become. That's the principle that dominates the uh, present youth. And earning sufficient to generate surplus to enjoy life. You know, this young generation is very, very enthusiastic. They uh, believe in that life na milegi dobara, right? milegi dobara. So they want to earn a lot of money and at the same time they want to spend a lot of money. And you know, when they spend money, that also gives a kick start to our economic activities, right? So result, they prosper. And at the same time, economy also prospers. So what kind of mindset we need? The present one. We don't uh, look for jobs, rather we look for creating jobs for others, right? So I'm happy that this changing aspiration, uh, aspirations are changing. And uh, as respected Professor Borgohai mentioned that India is doing very well in this direction now. Uh, entrepreneurship is really thriving in India. And I would like to uh, add here that in last few years, we have uh, uh, produced 66 now uh, uh, unicorns have uh, emerged. That, ref that, that suggests, uh, uh, that reflects how this you know, aspect is uh, gaining the momentum. And uh, these uh, uh, 44 unicorns added uh, 40 percent unicorns added to our, our economy in just last one year during COVID time. So uh, it's really happening and it's happening for uh, something better for the country. Why entrepreneurship? You know, we know that once people uh, use their innovative ideas, they learn to use resources that are available that would definitely uh, handle uh, the economic backwardness, social backwardness of the region, economic development of the region. If there are uh, in the, there are many resources, human resources as well as other natural resources and other, any other resource are, remain underutilized or unutilized. And due to that reason, uh, uh, reason doesn't develop. We have who knows it better than people living in Northeast region. Entrepreneurship was weak here and that's why Despite being a very rich region, we could not really uh, uh, make uh, much impact on the country's economy. But now it is happening. I'll, I'll uh, show some examples then. Uh, to enable proper utilization, resource utilization, you know, unless until resources are utilized properly, we cannot uh, you know, uh, think of entering the orbit of developed countries. Proper utilization of human potentials, implementing innovations, uh, and to create employment and eradication of economic disparity. These are some of the reasons why entrepreneurship is uh, basically preferred or you know, advocated. Who is an entrepreneur? You know, normally uh, entrepreneurs show high need for achievement. I will not work under anyone. I'll be my own boss. I don't have to say, I don't have to tell someone you know that you know you are always right boss is always right no i will be the boss need for achievement i'll be the commanding position i'll lead right need for power power lies in my hand if i have good ideas i will have more power if i and new and improved new new innovations because you know uh, once we have innovations, we get that first mover's advantage. Right? We have thousands of uh, uh, examples where even small, small innovations, like you know, we never thought of having uh, a product like Maggie in the country. It's it's, it's a small product which never which is not a very great concept, but uh, 
uh, it was a very innovative idea two minutes noodles and it hit the market and uh, you know made big difference uh, in companies uh, revenues okay so entrepreneurs they are high on need for achievement they they, they you know there is a saying that nothing succeeds like success so having achieved one success they look for next all right and uh, need for power they want to have power in their own hands rather than deriving power from other sources and third innovative they are very high on innovation they have very fertile ideas very fertile minds and they like to use their innovation for their own development and also for the development of the country independence you know bill gates uh, he uh, says i never studied to top and today many toppers of term top universities are by employees you all know that bill gates is a college dropout he he says that i never studies to top never studied to top but today many toppers of the top university are by employees okay so independence is another very important characteristics that they uh, reflect propensity to take risk you know larry page and sergey bin both of them were doing phd in stanford okay they struggled uh, while doing the literature review okay and then they realized that you no know, people across the globe they which offers you a lot of uh, insights on all these issues okay so they took risk they uh, left their phd program in the middle and uh, started google and then of course their good idea immediately was supported by an angel uh, investor of course we have uh, angel investor today as our speaker pankaj ji i'm sure he will get a lot of ideas from the uh, uh, young entrepreneurs and support them right and then another important thing is leadership you know the leadership uh, 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 they have shown leadership we have warren buffett we have bill gates we have our own ajit prem ji we have uh, our tatas who have played a very important role in you know in the development okay so now uh, i my question uh, I, i would urge young students to uh, answer this question whether do, do they have these qualities and i'm sure they do have these qualities and then they must uh, try to refine these qualities to st- enter into the uh, area of entrepreneurship okay yeah uh, uh, i would like to you know i have very limited time uh, just half an hour time so i would like to basically you know there is a saying that uh, uh, you know uh, seeing is believing right so i would like to cite some examples uh, that uh, have come in our own vicinity there some examples from northeast okay and uh, Uh, i'm sure that will motivate many other people many uh, young friends to enter into entrepreneurship i have chosen four examples here the daffodil nursery which is there in uh, khetri very close to guwahati i'm sure you must have uh, seen that while coming uh, from you know guwahati to uh, this side okay uh, nara aba uh, another uh, new venture that was started by one of our students uh, of neris and uh, she has earned Uh, or she has brought a lot of laurels for herself and also for our institute neris okay then darge brokpa of chandar and then kudamba uh, the kiwi king i call him so i'll share this four story in, uh, briefly because of this time constraint uh, let me first take you uh, let me first uh, take you to the highlands of uh, uh, tawang right there is a place uh, called chandar in that area you can see me with this gentleman this is mr darge brokpa we are standing at the altitude of around 12000 feet okay you can see this place is above the tree line all right and at this height the only uh, interesting feature you find is uh, this yak and this gentleman uh, mr darge brokpa his uh, cute wife is sering and his son these three people this trio of this uh, uh, this uh, rokpa trio they are running a business they are having a business and you will be happy to know that they are doing they are sticking to their traditional business of yak rearing okay and you will be amazed to learn that uh, 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 can i have some guesses what would be their annual turnover 
what would be their economic worth? Mr. Darge Brokpa's economic worth. Can 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 anyone you know? He is into this uh, yak rearing business, and his uh, uh, economic worth. Can anyone guess? All right, it's difficult. Fifty crores. Sorry. Fifty to hundred crores. Yes. Fifty to hundred crores. I think Professor Singh, you are right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> his economic worth is around hundred crores. All right. And uh, uh, I'm sure many people will question this. Uh, he owns 2,000 yards, and the price tag on each yard is around 1 lakh rupees. So straight away, you know, you can calculate. <laughs> you can calculate. All right. And then he is uh, producing these yak products, cheese, yak, cheese, yak. Which are of demands in Southeast Asian countries, Bhutan, even uh, Tibet. So he he exports all these things. His son, you can see his young son. He uh, he is uh, BSc from Delhi University, from a very prestigious college, Delhi University. He decided his studies to join his father's business. After all, hundred crores business is not a small thing. <laughs> okay, and I would uh, I would love to take Professor Singh. To this uh, this gender village with me sometime. You know? <laughs> so uh, so Highlanders, I mean Dati Brokpa, a small man, you know, who was involved in physical labor before entering into this business, has been able to script this success story. So if he can do that, anyone can do that, right? Uh, second, uh, Mr. Budamba. Uh, this uh, Mr. Budamba again is from the same reason he orchards in uh, Dirang, uh, Arunachal Pradesh. And uh, let me uh, give you, uh, uh, let me introduce Mr. Uh, uh, Budamba briefly. He started his career as a liberal in Santi Si breeding farm. He was, he was, he, he, he started his career as a liberal. He, as a young boy, he worked very hard. He was, you know, uh, uh, you know, carrying stones on his shoulders, he was carrying bamboos and, you know, uh, serving, uh, working for more than 12 hours a day. Okay? Then he realized uh, that, you know, there can be some better opportunities and he started, you know, uh, growing apples in his uh, uh, agricultural fields. And uh, uh, then came uh, Arunachal government scheme uh, to promote uh, kiwi and he, he was one of the first kiwi growers of Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, initially, he was uh, uh, supplied 500 saplings uh, uh, by the government of uh, Himachal Pradesh. And uh, four years back, Arunach, uh, Himachal government requested him to supply Himachal Pradesh. So this is a success story. Uh, you know, he is one of the largest producer of kiwi. Uh, in whole of uh, country, and uh, he did not there, you know, and you growth. You are only, you know, uh, inviting your uh, downswing. So he is not only growing kiwi. He started apple. I mean, he uh, he is growing apples, kiwi, and then uh, and not just that, he, he has developed his own nurseries. Uh, now he is, uh, you know, uh, supplying saplings to uh, all the hill states who uh, want to uh, grow, uh, plant these uh, products there, these, these, these foods there. So he's uh, a huge supplier of, you know, kiwi saplings, parsimon saplings, and of course, uh, this apple is always there. And uh, he's now a person who went to school, or if I use two language, he is an illiterate. He loves calling himself as, uh, as an illiterate, but he is consultant to Nagaland government. He's consultant to Sikkim government, and he's also he has also been invited by Uttarakhand government to ideas about all these things. Okay? And uh, recently, just three four years back, he got the Mahindra Award for his you know uh, great entrepreneurial. I mean, 
uh, have been able to sex to Tori and now he's a billionaire. Mr. Budamba is a billionaire, but he's still sticking to roots, very you know, <laughs> a person with very high humility, right? Now I'll mention, I'll talk about my own student, Rita Tage, who passed out from their rest in uh, early 90s. Uh, she did her BTEC in uh, rural development. Uh, Department of Rural uh, Development uh, for Natural Pradesh, probably, uh, as assistant engineer. And after having worked for a few years, he realized that, no, this is not something that satisfies her passion. So she left her job and uh, she found capacity around 400, uh, four, four crores rupees to set up a winery. It was not easy to the binary area which did not have proper communication, transportation was a major challenge. And, you know, machines would come here and then assembling, you know, it was quite difficult job. Now, uh, 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 is a big hit. She is the first Kiwi, uh, you know, wine brewer of the country. And uh, her wine is purely produced out of this organic uh, you know, kiwis. And of course, there is a uh, you know, linkage between Budamba and uh, Tagerita. Budamba initially supplied uh, kiwi saplings to Tagerita, and now Tagerita has her own uh, you know, kiwi fish. And, uh, uh, she is going for this backward uh, integration and forward integration. And ordered so well that she has got the uh, UNDP and Niti, uh, Niti IO awards and several other awards, an entrepreneur of uh, Northeast and many awards. I and mean, you can see, uh, you, you can uh, get the details on this Wikipedia also, which talks highly about uh, Tagerita. Uh, you know, she joined Nerist after completing a class 10. I saw her as a small kid, but now I see a matured and a very confident entrepreneur. And, you know, this is what is the power of entrepreneurship, right? And, uh, of course, I uh, I mentioned about daffodil. Uh, sorry, I do not have pictures of daffodil. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, in, in the, they, there was one school in Khetri, uh, and the principal, Mr. Gopinath Sir, was the principal who, I mean, who, who, who was a very committed teacher and for that he earned the, you know, uh, uh, name uh, Siksa Dut. He, he was known as Siksa Dut in the treason. Okay? When he retired, he retired, you know, he, he served uh, government uh, for about 30, 35 years and on his retirement, he got some amount as provident fund and other things, pension and all. And then after retirement, he fell sick and he was to be admitted in Ames. And all his life's earning was drained out in treating his ailments. Okay? And uh, one thing that he had taught to his students was spend your laser time in creative activities. Gardening was one of his favorites. So his his children, his two sons, who also studied in school, and uh, realizing the hardships after uh, Gopinathji passed away, they uh, knew that their strength is gardening. That is what their father had taught them. They started a small nursery in Kethi, and they had limited amount with them, 5,000 rupees, and then started that nursery with just 5,000 rupees. And uh, to, during those times of crisis, when their first of 10,000 rupees was received, they, that was a big, you know, motivation. That was a big motivational factor for them. And, they, you know, I interviewed Mr. Dhrup Sarma, the elder son uh, of uh, Gopinaji. And, uh, you know, very uh, a man uh, of humility. And today, he is supplying these saplings 
not only to different parts of the country, but to whole of Southeast Asia. And uh, uh, his the audited, uh, you know, turnover is 20 crores rupees per annum. Right? A business that started with just 5,000 rupees with, uh, with no surety that they will be able to survive or not. But they realize that this is the only thing they know. This is their strength. Gardening is their strength. They know horticulture, right? And uh, this is what uh, uh, can give us some, you know, mileage. And today, their annual turnover is 20 crores rupees, right? And uh, again, you know, when we when we uh, don't grow, we go out of the business, realizing this fully well. Now we have two daffodils, old daffodil and new daffodil. All right. New daffodil is started by the younger brother, younger Sarvas. So I was curious to know why this two. Is there any rift between these two brothers? Dhruv and his younger brother, both of them laughed at me. So no, there is is no problem uh, with the two brothers, but you know demand was so huge that you know one enterprise could not have you know met this huge demand, right? So they uh, they are helping each other, but now they have two big uh, you know nurseries, daffodil old and daffodil new, and together they are catering to the demand that the huge demand that exists not only in the country but in all of Southeast Asia, and they are exporting these things. So this is the power of entrepreneurship. I am sure my young friend would find it quite uh, uh, encouraging. If other people who are just like us could make it, why can't we? All right. Now I come to uh, uh, my time is now uh, clock is ticking away. So I'll quickly discuss uh, uh, Azim Premji's ten principles, ten golden rules that he suggests. First, dare to dream. Ajim Premji suggests that, you know, to be a successful entrepreneur, dreaming is very, very important. And our uh, respected uh, former uh, president, APJ Abdul Kalamji, in his book, Ignited Mind, also writes the same thing, you know, dream, dream, and dream. Dreams motivate you for actions. Actions bring successes, right? So dreaming is very important. So the first uh, rule that Ajim Premji puts forward for the successful entrepreneurship is dreaming and then set clear goals. We must be very clear in our mind what we have to do, all right? We have to identify our passion. Tage Rita identified her passion uh, to be into manufacturing sector. She had her strength in engineering. She is, a, she, is, she is an agriculture engineer, right? She was not satisfied while working for the government. She, used, she identified her strength and used her strength. Okay. Mr. Dhruv Sarma, he knew that horticulture is his strength. So they started daffodils, right? So set clear goals and strive to you know, achieve those things and never lose jest and curiosity for learning. Learning is very important. Warren Buffett devotes five hours every day for reading new things. I uh, read one of his interviews in uh, Forbes. And uh, he has he, he he says that I every day I make it a point to spend at least five hours on reading. Okay, same thing uh, with G D Bidlaji. G D Bidlaji at the age of eighty two years, he st he was taking tuitions. He st uh, he took tuitions to learn French language. Okay, so learning never goes waste. All those who read they lead. Right. So this is the third rule that Ajit Premji suggests. Fourth. Strive for excellence. Uh, you know, mediocrity doesn't last. We have uh, Professor Singh, who has uh, led this great institutions to great heights. Not, not for nothing. You know, maintaining quality. That's why there are several private uh, colleges which uh, uh, came and which phased out very quickly. But Royal Group is thriving, you know, because you have been able to maintain good quality. And uh, while appreciating Professor Singh and his team, I move on to the next topic. So strive for excellence, be a weaver bird, a small bird that makes beautiful nests. So when small bird can do that, we can also do that, right? 
build your self confidence that's very very important uh, of course i have taken a few examples here i'm not going to cover all that because of the time constraint but since we are talking about entrepreneurship i want to give you an example of mr rajiv bhai uh, i had the opportunity of visiting this patel brass uh, during one of my visits to gujarat okay and uh, this rajiv bhai patel uh, who uh, owns this uh, patel brass company uh, you know it's a, it's a medium scale and he was the sole producer he was the sole producer of these 36 types of ball bearings which are used in railways so obviously he was number one in the country and then this i said then what about i was fully convinced and then i asked him what about his next plan he says i want to be a global leader in next 10 years of course this time i had no reason to disbelieve him i said can you enlighten me how you're going to he says my plans are based on indian railways growth indian railway has taken contract in nigeria in iran and many other african countries so along with indian rails i will also be growing so i am number one in the country and i'll be number one in the world also in future and i you uh, know monitored his progress and he was number one he became number one globally also right so build your self self confidence that's very important learn to work in team uh alone you cannot do anything right you must have heard uh, uh, about this surat diamond merchants case who very benevolently who in a very benevolent uh, manner he shares his profits with his people right uh, sometimes he has gifted you know 50 uh, uh, houses to all his employees next year he gifted cars to all his employees okay so basically when your team when you look after your team well your team will also show that kind of commitment okay so learn to work in team that's also very important uh, individuality doesn't you know take you too far uh, so uh, you know developing team is another thing that as you mentioned suggest take care of yourself you know uh, it is very very important to take good care of your health also okay uh, maintain yourself well all right uh, anil ambani he is a marathoner he goes uh, he runs marathons okay uh, mark zuckerberg who is a very busy person you know uh, and uh, he has he has created skating rinks in his uh, within his own campus so he advises his uh, you know people to use his ring and uh, you know do some exercises and now in progressive organization we have gyms also so whenever you are tired of work go go to gym and do some workout and you know so taking care of yourself is that's very important because fatigue should not you know uh, uh, dominate you and then persevere you know the path of entrepreneurship is full of failures is littered with failures i would say right path of entrepreneurship is littered with failures and if you give up you are gone right so anyone who can persevere would last you know uh, take any ex- any uh, you know entrepreneur initial failures they have you know overcome then only they could become successful in their life i would like to of course i am aware of my time but still i am tempted to join this small story of a very cute girl in the us okay uh, her perseverance i am sure would motivate many young entrepreneurs a girl young girl she found that her brother john was bedridden for quite some time and once she heard uh, her father talking to her mother that you know uh, john is uh, not well and uh, uh, i don't have we don't have much money left and only miracle can save 
correct? So this is what she heard, you know, uh, she overheard her parents talking. So only miracle can save him and we don't have money. So this girl realized that there's something serious with my brother, John. So she checked up how much money do I have, all right? She had that, you know, piggy bank uh, thing. So she had collected some money. Uh, she realized that, okay, their parents don't have much money left with them, but I have some money and, you know, Miracle can save. So I'll buy Miracle from my savings. So she goes to a chemist, a, a medicine shop, and uh, asks, uh, you know, uncle, can I have Miracle? The shopkeeper, you know, simply laughed it away. He said, no, no, no. She goes to the next shop, asks the same question. She again, you know, got the same response. And when he continues visiting different shops, so one day she found one person standing uh, at the counter. He heard, what did you say? This girl says, uh, uncle, I want to buy Miracle. And I have money. I'm not going to get it free. I have money. Then the gentleman uh, said, how much money do you have? And why do you want to buy Miracle? Then he explained, you know, my brother is uh, down and he's bedridden for quite some time. And uh, my parents say that they don't have money, but I have money. And uh, I heard my parents, uh, you know, saying that only Miracle can save him. So I am here to buy Miracle to save my brother. The gentleman asked about his brother. The gentleman asked the girl, how much money do you have? He says, I have $6.90. He said, good. That is the amount required for uh, Miracle. All right, I have Miracle with me and I'll take this $6.90 from you and take me to your brother. I'll, I'll give Miracle there itself. So this gentleman goes there to uh, examine her brother. And he realized that he was suffering from some serious neuro pro neurological problem. And this gentleman was no other than famous neurosurgeon, Dr. Armstrong. Okay? And Dr. Armstrong took John to his uh, uh, hospital and of course he was cured. So what cured uh, John's ailment was not Armstrong, but that girl's perseverance, right? She did not give up. She didn't give up. She persevered and finally succeeded. So it's a great lesson we learn from this small story and all the entrepreneurs need to show that kind of perseverance, right? And have a broad social life. Entrepreneurship will not be sustainable if we only think for our own profit, okay? If we only think for ourselves, entrepreneurship will not take us too far. Have a broad social vision. Now, you all have, must have heard about Warren Buffett, okay? He, he was, at, at one point of time, he was the second richest person after Bill Gates. Of course, now his position has gone down because he is he's, uh, uh, you know, giving a lot of money for charity purpose. And he has also, you know, motivated many others, including Bill Gates, to do charity, right? So social vision, if people around us are happy, if people around us are rich, people around us also prosper, our products will also sell in the market. And uh, finally, Ajim Premji suggests that never let success go to your head. Okay, we call it fatal flaws. Okay, we uh, 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 sometimes when we get power, when we achieve some things, uh, success gets into our nerves. So we need to avoid that. Entrepreneurs need to avoid that fatal flaws. Okay, we have seen many. Uh, cases where people have fallen from top to uh, you know to the ground so never let success go to your head uh, maintain that humility we have some great examples uh, of humility uh, our ratan tata ji is a great example okay uh, with uh, having achieved such great successes he still so uh, he, uh, he still reflects a high level of humility okay warren buffett he is so down to earth, he still lives in his two-room flat, okay? Uh, such a rich person and living in his old two-room flat and using his old cars, okay? So never let success go to your head. And I think, uh, you know, that that is what paves the way for the sustainability, right? So these 10 points that uh, 
uh, G plane G puts forward. And with that, uh, I stop. And uh, thank you very much for giving me a very pleasant hearing. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so that was a very interesting session. We got to learn about the 10 golden rules and the examples which you, I mean, examples are, uh, I mean, really a learning lesson for us. Uh, so we have uh, questions from our participants. So I would read out sure, the sir. questions. So the first yeah, yeah. question is, uh, what is the most challenging thing about being an entrepreneur? Right. Uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Chopra would answer this during his talk, but I feel that uh, ideas, generating ideas is very, very important, you know, because idea, uh, you know, we have very fertile brains, right? And ideas can, uh, I, I, I feel that, you know, good ideas can give us a very good start uh, for being hey, Okay. Yeah, many times, uh, uh, ideas which are very, uh, which are considered to be very, you know, uh, not very effective, but they have been able to make big differences. Okay, I, I give the example of Maggie, two minute noodle. We we simply laughed at it initially, but it clicked. Okay, uh, we have uh, uh, Uber and Ola and Flipkart. You know, all these uh, entrepreneurial ventures started with just some new good ideas. Right, so I think idea. I'll I'll. Uh, bet for those ideas. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so our next question is, uh, what advice would you give to someone just starting a business? I think the participant wants to know, like for the initiators, how they would go. Ahead. Okay. Yeah, I would suggest that you read the stories or uh, biographies of some successful entrepreneurs. Okay. That's very, very important because that will give you, uh, you know, some very valuable insights, the struggle they have gone through. Because many times what happens, we enter into an uh, entrepreneurship, we fail and then we think that, no, it's not our cup of tea. This uh, knowing more about these successful entrepreneurs will give you idea, like they also failed, but still, you know, they, uh, you know, got over uh, those things and then emerged successful. So I think knowing more about successful entrepreneurs will uh, give you, will enlighten you better. Okay. Sir, our next question is, how to manage the falling self-doubt and failure? Uh, how to manage your self-doubts? Okay, uh, it's a, a different topic altogether, self-management, right? You need to manage yourself first, discipline, okay? And then, you know, uh, self self confidence. Of course, I uh, I, uh, I I wanted to give some examples uh, uh, of Mahatma Gandhi and Vivekananda. All right, uh, you know, underestimating ourselves is a big crime. At least I consider that to be a big crime. Never underestimate yourself. Right. Uh, now, if you permit me, if you give me some time, then I would like to. Uh, uh, I mean. Uh, talk about Swami Vivekananda or, and Mahatma Gandhi, two, two cases that I wanted to discuss, but I could, due to time constraint, I did not discuss, all right? So Mahatma Gandhi, you know, uh, uh, he uh, went to England to attend this round table conference, okay? And uh, uh, he uh, attended that conference in that loin clothes. Right, uh, and you all know why Mahatma Gandhi used to wear that single dhoti. Okay, uh, he was going to Bastar and realized the you know saw the plight of uh, while while his vehicle was going through a, uh, a bridge, he realized that ladies they were bathing and they did not have even the second pair of clothes to cover their bodies. So on that day, uh, from the from that very moment, he uh, decided that he will wear only that much what is available with other people in the country. So he goes to attend uh, that roundtable conference in those same courts. What a confidence, you know. And then someone to humiliate Mahatma Gandhi, you know, uh, uh, asked him, Mr. Gandhi, don't you think that, you know, the, the dress you're wearing is not, uh, uh, you know, su suiting to this occasion? Then he says, uh, no, what was his response? Had a common person like me have been there, you know, I would have been tremendously nervous. But he says, I think the king is wearing enough clothes for two of us. 
so okay i'm <laughs> i'm good enough right and another example uh, for you know uh, self confidence i want to use is that of some vivekanand so vivekanand was traveling in a train uh, he was having a valid first first class ticket and uh, along with uh, him his co passenger was a british chap so this british gentleman didn't uh, like you know a, a, a man an indian traveling with him uh, then he, he he told swami ji hey tum dusre uh, compartment mein jao he he told swami ji in hindi hey tum dusre compartment dusre compartment mein jao swami ji ne unko bola dekhi aap usse tameez se baat kijiye आपको मुझसे आप कह के बात करनी चाहिए यदि आप उससे कुछ कहना चाहते हैं तो आप आपको मुझसे आप कह के बात करनी चाहिए देन नाउ दिस टाइम यू नो एम्बेस्ड ब्रिटिश ही सेड हे मैन आई डोंट नो योर लैंग्वेज राइट एंड स्वामी जी इज रिस्पॉन्स वुड आई एम श्योर इट वॉज अमेजिंग ही सेट जेंटलमैन नॉट दैट यू नो नॉट दैट यू डोंट नो माई लैंग्वेज यू डोंट नो योर लैंग्वेज एज वेल otherwise you would have addressed me a gentleman i don't know your language so teaching english to a british sir you know uh, is the confidence that uh, swami vivekananda reflected so never you know underestimate yourself you are you know uh, as strong as einstein or any other person the only thing is we need to use our brains we uh, should not uh, underestimate ourselves okay so i hope uh, i've been able to answer your question Yes, sir. Very well. Uh, so we have few more questions, but I think that will be suitable for our second speaker. Questions are related to funding yes, yes. and things like that. Okay. So I would. Uh, right. I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it up uh, with Pankaj, sir. Yeah. Sure, sure, sir. Sure. I'm also looking forward to listening to Pankaj to enlighten yeah. myself. Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So thank you so much for sharing your experiences and giving us a new perspective on the concept of entrepreneurship. i'm sure our participants also have enjoyed it so you're a gem who has spread your shine in multiple areas with your perseverance your discipline and your hard work thank you so much sir for sparing your thank valuable you. time to be here with us today thanks so, thanks thank you thank you sir so now we move forward to our uh, second part of the program where we have our esteemed speaker mr pankaj chopra so i would like to give a brief introduction about sir so is a partner of the company india accelerator and who is also a serial angel investor speaker mentor and founder he is deeply committed to add value to the startup ecosystem and revolutionize entrepreneurship picture in india sir invested in over 80 startups to name a few once galaxy cards lawyer natures tatva vapp tech eagle profase get work sec logic and the list is quite long so without wasting much time i would like to hand over the session to pankaj chopra sir over to you sir thank you so much ma'am uh, thank you so much for a very very warm welcome uh, thank you so much uh, royal global university i am the most youngest in the uh, in the event right now very privileged and honored to share the event with dr singh dr singh needs no introduction has uh, amity university is a landmark uh, university in its own uh, professor uh, brugon uh, dr das uh, uh, mr pant and thank you so much dr aruna i'm little lost here because uh, dr pant has uh, with his uh, uh, experience uh, uh, covered a lot of things how the entrepreneur journey is so i will try to do justice in the time i am i'm getting here uh, to start with i would um, like to quote this uh, 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 you know quote from warren buffet and i always use it uh, whenever i am everywhere and anywhere discussing uh uh you know in a discussion with any of these startups if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep you will work until you die i follow this very very deeply i would like to try i would like to start with uh, 
you know, uh, throwing a little light on my journey into the startup ecosystem. I am a numbers person. If you see, I have added another N and added another A. I'm uh, very fascinated by the numerology uh, vertical also. I've been dealing into the stock market since 2008 now. And uh, uh, done a lot of courses. So I'm not a certified financial planner or not a certified financial analyst. I've All I've learned is through experiences in my different, different industry verticals. I, uh, as I said, have been associated with the stock market since 2008. And 2014, 15, as Dr. As Professor Pant also, uh, you know, threw some light that we should read and we should read a lot of case studies of uh, successes as well as failures of who's who who have been into this, this entrepreneurship journey. So while I was, you know, uh, handling a couple of clients in terms of handling their financial portfolios, something bit me, which was a very non-emotional way of and a very non-biased way of making money into the stock market, which was into algorithmic trading. Algo trading is nothing but creating rules and setting them where everything end to end happens on the cloud. Everything happens automatically. You only have to open a DMAT account and uh, rest your artificial intelligence or your autobots will do it. Unfortunately, I did not come across a company in India. And unfortunately, I did not come across a skill set of any particular company or any particular individual who could make that particular product for me. So I had that passion and I had already decided that this is what I have to do. So I met a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of software developers. I met a lot of software companies, but unfortunately they were unable to do it. Now, which I always call is an accidental marriage with the startup ecosystem and with India Accelerator was back in 2017. 2017 is when um, I got a call that uh, from a very dear friend of mine who is already a partner with uh, India Accelerator that they are two IITians, uh, IIT Khadakpur uh, uh, graduates who have made a similar product which you have in your mind. So I was very excited. I reached the Accelerator office based out of Gurgaon and I had an opportunity to go and attend their, their presentation. And I was very happy that this is the day and I have what I was dreaming about. I have got this product in my mind, but I did not know anything about what an accelerator was, what a startup is. I had no clue in 2017. All I knew is that I have two set of people, two IIT graduates who made this product and I was looking for this product for the last four years. So while I started spending more time and developing the product because I was the subject matter expert in that particular field also, because I've been, you know, doing stocks since 2008 to 2017, I had a fairly uh, good experience of nine years into the capital markets. We started developing the product. So I had something in my mind, the founders had something in, in our mind and we started developing the product. Now, why I'm telling you this journey is the topic I have been given here is a pre-incubator stage and incubator stage and what is a proper startup. A startup means how can a startup be, be successful? So now in my startup journey, a pre-incubator stage was missing. And I will come to the uh, my first investment. I will come to what happened in, what happened to that Alco trading platform. I will definitely tell you. But I would want to give a pause and talk about in my startup journey, the pre-incubator stage was missing. I graduated in 2001. Then there was no uh, e-cell and enterprise cell in the colleges. There was no startup uh, uh, initiative taken in the, in, the, in the colleges. So this is one part which was missing when I also entered into the startup ecosystem. So what happens in a pre-incubation stage? Pre-incubation stage is a stage where you just get an idea. 
and then you dwell that idea amongst your family friends peers acquaintances or you if you've just stepped down from your professional career while you are working you get an idea that where this processes can get better or you are looking at developing a new product is that stage or phase it is a very important uh, a phase in the startup ecosystem where it is very important to discuss idea with your if you are in a if you are in an uh, in a in a close environment or a college and your college has a pre incubator cell it is very important to go ahead and talk to anybody be it your dean be it your senior most professor be it the person who is heading your uh, your pre incubator cell that this is the idea see please understand paytm flipkart amazon facebook airbnb at one point of time was also an idea they are unicorns some are decacorns so they also had gone through a pre incubator phase of course at that point of time also they did not have a pre incubator cell or a pre incubator company who would tell them or hand hold them why is it important is this is the stage where you will talk about before incorporating into a company or before deep diving into the the market you will have to understand how good your product is is it another amazon is it another another paytm or is it another better amazon is it another better better paytm so this is that stage where you dwell the idea where you define the idea and you're about to measure that how good that idea is you are you are just going into another ecosystem where with discussions with very important and most importantly trying to identify if pankaj chopra is good at marketing do i get another co-founder or another partner who is very good at creating that technology stack or creating that technology product so that that and and also adding a couple of more founders or a couple of more members in my team is that phase of pre incubation where you decide that you know our, syn our synergies are matching we are uh, uh, four two one three four five six of us are aligned and want to work for a particular product particular so so this is where your pre incubation stage is very important this is your seed basically where you putting a seed and trying to understand how good how can i what manure do i put is there any other hybrid product do i do i put into the pot so that that seed seed can give me the 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 produce as early as possible yes there will be challenges yes while you are defining a a product there could be a problem where you are measuring it wrong which is which is perfectly all right because right now there is no downside to it the only downside at a pre incubation stage is that you get a red cross to your particular product or your particular idea you go back to the drawing board again again you have a team incubation stage will also have their 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 set of mentors they will have their set of industry experts entrepreneurs who who have gone through that phase so it is very important for you to engage it is very important for you to get that idea out of your mind be it see for me i don't see an idea could be good could not be so good i am not looking at idea which which gives a red cross all of us uh, outrightly no every idea has to come out every idea has a possibility probability to get transformed every idea can be modified or can be twisted in a way that there could be a space into the market when you're ready with an idea you've dwelled you've engaged the idea in, in your pre incubation stage you're ready you see a space of the idea in the in the market and you're ready to incorporate a company and take that company to the next level is a stage which is called an incubation stage see incubate pre incubation incubation and acceleration all three are distinguished phases they are in a way connected and in a way not not connected also when you're ready with an idea which has been virtually 
validated by some of the industry experts, some of the founders that this idea could do well. See, we're not talking about this idea could get, get funding. We're not talking about this idea could be successful or not. We're talking about just putting that idea, nurturing that idea and tossing it over to the next stage. Now you have your team ready. Now you have your, you've got some idea of the processes ready, right? You've had the idea has been validated by the industry experts, mentors, where you have access to. The next step is why you have some data ready and you're trying to incorporate a company is your incubation stage. Incubation stage is, is a much more serious stage than the pre-incubation level because you're trying to put the idea into black and white. You're trying to file for licenses. You're trying to get government approvals. You're trying to get other XYZ approvals for to take the, take the startup idea to the market. You will have to engage through uh, experienced industry minds. You will be dead. You will have to talk to dedicated mentors on it. You, the most important and the distinguished uh, feature of uh, incubator stages that you will go to the market to collect data. See every company, every startup, every new business is driven about data. Once you do a small data set into the market, you will understand how well your product is going to perform. You will get that data back into the company. You will brainstorm in your internal, internal company. You will then go to the market, redesign the wheel, redefine the meal, uh, the wheel, take the product again into the market so that one, you have ideated it. Second, you have are ready to disrupt the market. Everything will be backed by data. The difference between and pre-incubation and incubation stage right now is you will have your set of mentors, industry veterans in your pre-incubation stage. You might have the same set of investors, sorry, same set of mentors, same set of industry veterans, same set of veteran founders of successful founders in your incubation stage also. But the mentorship changes here. The mentorship is more engaged. The mentorship is more intense. Why? Because you are now going to the open market. You are diving deep into the waters, understanding how well can I go from north to south and how well can I collect the data from the market and get back. Why is data very, very important? Data is an enabler. Data will help you understand how good your product is. Data will help you reach the, the next level into the company, be it a services company, be it your product, product company. It is very, very important. Now at the opening, when I was, when I was sharing my first investment into the startup ecosystem, into the algorithmic company, all these things were not were, were, were missing actually. I, at that point of time, did have a mentor. I did at that point of time, did have an industry veteran. I did at that point of time, I did get access to the best industry minds possible. But then had I got this while I was in college, had I got this while I was in, why was between jobs or while I had this in my mind, maybe I had to the best industry minds people no. The time period which the company takes from point A to point B, from a pre-incubator, if we have a pre-incubator in, in, in place, incubator, if you have an incubator in place, makes a lot of difference in your entrepreneurship journey. An incubator is the most integral stage between a pre-incubator and an accelerator stage. It gives you the right path it tells you whether you will be successful or not. It is an enabler for you to be the next Paytm or the next Zomato or uh, the next Oyo of the of the of the world. As uh, 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 Professor Pant was also saying, India has um, uh, got a lot of unicorns of it. Of those unicorns, 
are data driven all those unicorns are some way or the other have gone through this incubator phase all the unicorns right now are looking at improvising the business how will they improvise the business everything and anything depends upon data the next step when you're ready with all the data sets possible you're ready to reach the next level this is the level where you would want the maximum amount of funding this is the level where you would want the the right mentors this is the stage where you would want the right peers with you peers be it mentors peers could be industry veterans peers could be somebody in in uh, helping with your go to market product somebody who can upscale your technology is where the accelerator model comes in accelerator model is a platform where you are absolutely ready with your product your product has been validated you, you have a number of users you've got traction you've got revenue in place we are not talking about whether you're profitable or not we are only talking about a product which is ready to be used and is accepted in the market a role of then role of an accelerator your accelerator will help you reach your global users an accelerator will help you get funded an accelerator will redesign the wheel i am not saying redefine the wheel so that you get a you get a better audience they will help you create a go to market product they will help you in networking they will help you grow your business they will help you in whatever way becoming your virtual cfos your virtual ctos a chief technological officer your virtual chief financial officer is a platform where you are ready to basically take off from the runway you've been on the runway in the pre incubator and incubator stage you your actually identify is where your accelerator comes into the picture it's a very brief and a very bird's eye view of what an incubator what and pre incubator and an accelerator does i believe i could do justice to the time and giving a bird's eye view uh dr renu i uh, dr renu i would want to take the question i was i was a little quick because i would want to take the question answers first so that i can give a better explanation and a better uh, engagement here so that they, because i can see there are a lot of questions in the uh, chat box okay so i'll read the questions for you then sure, sure. Uh, so we have one question regarding uh, can you let us know how to learn about the documentation required during starting and running a company okay great so this is this is a very good example of what happens in the incubation stage as i said a pre incubation stage is where you are just ideating your incubation stage is where you are basically getting that idea into a com company form when you're forming a company an incubation where have all the mentors in different different verticals be it legal be it finance be it technology be it marketing be it a go to go to market product this is where this is where an an incubator plays a very pivotal role in creating your company all the documentation and all the certification and licenses which are required for you are done right at that incubation stage Uh, sir our next question is how to find investors and how to pitch the idea to an investor successfully what do the investors look for great so i would want to very loudly and a very in very boldly i will tell you do not run on run after getting funded make your product investably fit and de risk your product there will not be any dearth of any investor coming in as and when you want to raise funds this is where an incubator and accelerator model play another pivotal role see guys 
once you make your product or your startup or your business investably fit that means you've not unturned any stone stone possible your go to market product is intact you've got proper data data sets your technology is 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 the best you're scaling week on week you're managing all the matrix quarter on quarter so this is a long journey so a journey from an pre incubator and an incubator stage can take about 2 years also the fastest stage is an accelerator accelerator stage because that is combined into a boot camp or a cohort at india accelerator what we do is all the startups which are eligible and get into that boot camp are aligned in one way or the other they have all their licenses in place they have their go to market strategies in place they are generating revenue and they are live business models with proper data sets available so the the timeline for a boot camp here is not more than 4 to 4 to 6 months the best part about a boot camp or a cohort in india accelerator is which i call is a b school of startups this is where we make your product investably fit and we make we de risk them and we put them put them onto a conveyor belt model where lot of investors mini vcs consultants can come in they can pick up their different verticals and then they can get into the rounds of investment so as i said there is no uh, science to uh, uh, presenting to an investor or there is no uh, exact formula behind it but yes you have to make sure that your your while you are into that incubator stage and then you when you move on graduate to an accelerator stage and then when you graduate from an accelerator stage your product should be investably fit and should be de risked that this is where all the ingredients you will get in an incubator and an accelerator model so right starting from the college yes backed either by a private accelerator or from that college when you move on to an to a to a private accelerator like us which is india accelerator is where you get a combined package of getting getting de risked and investably fit sir our next question is how to get a good mentor and where how to go about the pre incubation phase like how to know if my idea will be successful and uh, how no, uh, two please. two three things clubs together yeah sure sure so uh, getting a mentor see a mentor could be see depends which stage are you in if you are into pre incubation stage maybe your father is your mentor maybe your relative is your is your mentor maybe your peer your colleague your acquaintance is your is your mentor so pre incubation stage i would call it a very informal stage right now yes there are a lot of formal uh, platforms also but yes that is where you are in a way just valid not even validating just putting that idea on on a rough sketch you can go to your college you can immediately go to anyone who you think that has a keen interest and a know how about how a startup uh, is or for that matter let's not talk about the startup we are talking about a very initial stage of running of incepting a business so anybody in any anybody who you know professor who understands or teaches you business management you can go to him you can talk to your peers you can talk to your parents they could be your mentor a more serious mentor will come in if it is not a formal pre incubation platform will come in into an incubation and an accelerator phase what was the next next question ma'am ah yes so next in question incubator. is from a incubator incubating probably incubating yeah the question is after starting a company some people or clients ask for patent right for a particular product so how to spend amount for patent for the product because a lot of money are being spent to develop a product and its packaging can you give some advice for the issue so so incubation is also one of those phases where you will get your initial funding so you will have to understand how well organically are you growing your company 
if your particular product needs a patent which is a very good usp your product should need that patent patent and you should make a business model in such a way that what are the what is the exact amount of spend you would need on your uh, on your fixed expenses so if patent is coming in between of selling your product so the patent has to be done so if you're raising funds and yes uh, as i said you know and an incubator or an accelerator will always give you an access to a mentor so you know, a mentor closely watches your startup if he thinks that this is a very good startup a mentor can be an investor also so you guys have to understand that see i i would want to quote a very very good uh, 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 line which from warren buffet again you know it is better to hang out with better people than you or industry veterans get an access because you will drift in that in that in that direction so after you doing an a pre incubation stage where you are in your family and friends you know in your very in your very captive cocoon and when you when you move out is where you will get access to mentors and 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 industry thought leaders and if you get the right mentor mentor will guide you in all these things for sure but he could in in turn be an investor or an investor connecty also because no one would want to go away with a good startup so we have around two or two three questions on team building like how to select a team while we want to start a i mean we are a business how to select a good team what are the qualities required in the i mean teammates how do we go ahead with that see eventually you will be spending more time than you will be spending with your parents your wives and your husbands eventually choosing a team at times it is could be you get an option but normally all these stars will be realigned in such a way that you get a team getting a co-founder or getting a founder hiring a co-founder come co-founder is the most difficult thing while in your while you are in your pre incubation phase or a pre incubation stage is a time you will when you are discussing things and where you are getting feedback that is a time you will get you will actually form a team incubation yes but all i've seen with my experience while you are in college while you are ideating that idea your your idea is still in the mind and when you are the first person the second or third or fourth person you do it you would kind of get the uh, get a co-founder then and then and there and team eventually when you grow the best and the best lethal combination of a founder and co-founder will be some will one will be from a tech background background and one will be from a non tech background that is how i see it so we have uh, one more question what are the legal requirements for starting up business again uh, you know every uh, business has its incorporation uh, legal structure if we are uh, per se only talking about uh, the uh, uh, specific to industry verticals uh, we have an incubator or an accelerator always has a legal team uh, and a legal uh, team which will enable them to create a company incorporate a company Uh, assist them in getting all the licenses possible, and to the last question, getting the patents also. So that is a pivotal uh, a role of an incubator and an and an accelerator also. Yes, sir. So thank you so much. So uh, we don't have any more questions in the chat box. So, um, sir, can we? Um, yes. We have one more, Arna. We have one more question. Let's go and see the chat box. So, how to target the audience for product? So, this question is already being asked. Okay. This is being repeated again. Okay. So, uh, Pankaj sir, um, would the would we I mean go forward uh, to the sure, conclusion? Sure. Conclusion. Okay. Sure. So, so uh, you know, again, so mm -hmm. I wanted to make this a more engaged uh, uh, event. because i'm sure you know a lot of people because i also come across over 500 plus uh, applications you know applications applied to us for our boot camp for our cohort 
in the absence of an incubator or a pre-incubator stage, there are a lot of pre-incubator and incubated, incubator stage startups also, also come in. So I would want to tell you a very bird's eye view of what at India Accelerator we do so that everybody, the audience get benefited out of it also. So I call this a B school for startups. When I say a business school for startups, we take these startups through a 14th week bootcamp. This is a very intense handholding bootcamp, which gives you a combination independent sessions on design thinking, OKR sessions, lean canvases. And this culminates into a demo day. Demo day is nothing but a large canvas of what, what a shark tank does. We have a captive uh, network of investors of over 900 right now who are mentors, who are industry thought leaders, who are CXOs. Because at India Accelerator, we run on a three pillar approach, which is a three C approach, which is connect, competent and cash. Competency have already shared where we run a 14 week bootcamp, which culminates into a demo day. Demo day is a, is a platform where we get audiences, angel investors, CXOs, industry thought leaders, veterans, founders who would want to invest into and take, take these startups to the next level. Could be passive investors or could be active, active investors. Second, we have the connects. We have a mentor pool and an investor pool of 900 plus already who are the founders or the startups who are in the bootcamp get immediate access to that pool. The pool is the most pivotal role here, which plays a very pivotal role. Why? Because the mentors take the startup to the next level. The mentors play a very important and a very pivotal role here. One, of course, mentors could eventually be investors also. Mentors could are play a pivotal role in de-risking the startup and make them investably fit for our conveyor belt model. Cash, as I said, mentors, we, we give them access to specific mentors from their specific industries, verticals, is when mentors, if uh, mo uh, mostly all the mentors, yes, do invest in the particular startups they are mentoring or they connect them to their proper investors. So very bird's eye view of this is what we do at India Accelerator. Thank you so much, sir, for providing yeah. us information. Uh, so, sir, uh, with this, we have come to the end of the program. With due permission of VC, sir, we would like to move to the conclusion of the program. Yes, sure, Arna. Thank you. Thank you, Pankaji. It was really very interesting. Thank you so much. So I was so listening to you. you. I was not thank sitting you. on my seat, sitting on the other side with some guests, but I was constantly listening to you. Thank you so much. It was a privilege, sir. Thank you so much. Being the youngest in the group, no, being the youngest in the group. So I've, I've got this privilege to go to a lot of IITs uh, across India and the passion and the enthusiasm, which I see. And after 2014, when uh, our honorable prime minister came in and the, the wave which for the startups have come in, it is, it is tremendous. So thank you so much for giving us the privilege. India Accelerator is also looking forward for a deep association here. So thank you so very much, sir. Thank you, Pankaj. We are also uh, trying our best to establish our innovation incubator. Right, right. We have got a very good space for that. It right. will be inaugurated on, I think, 8th of November. The physical right. infrastructure, we already have one or two companies there. So and uh, while I was in MIT, I was sitting in the innovation incubator itself. Right. So all that, I think, is going to be a good ecosystem out here also. Sir, you, you've, you've been there, done that. Amity is a landmark in its own. So yes, of course, if it's backed by you, I'm sure it's going to reach the skies. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, very sure about it. Thank you, Pankaj. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, dear participants. You all were engaging in an enthusiastic crowd. Yeah. I could, uh, I mean, we all could feel it um, with, your, uh, with the questions that you all have put forward with. Thank you, our invited speakers, Professor Pant and Mr. Pankaj. Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, respected chairperson academics, Alok Bura Gohai, sir, and all the members without whose support the program would not have been a successful one. Thank you, everyone. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.